Welcome to BergNightMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at part one of a two-part series on how to make this knife. We're going to start out with one of my standard AEBL stainless steel knife blanks. This particular style blank was designed to be modified. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to go to my 2x72 grinder and I'm going to slightly modify the profile, uh, adding a little bit of a recurve and just thinning out the blade a little bit. Using a coarse grid belt, uh, you remove the material very quickly. Once the blade is profiled to your liking, I also uh, drilled holes, pin holes through the handle. Um, I'm just flattening it out completely. I'm just going to use the flat platen of the 2x72. The next step uh, before starting to grind the bevels is to use a little Daikin Blue on the edge of the blade. Let that dry, and then using a line scribe, I'm going to scribe two parallel lines right on the edge that will mark the center. These are called railroad track lines. And it's those lines that are going to give me a visual reference while I'm grinding the bevels, so that the bevel ends up being nice and even on both sides of the blade. You can see the little bit of a recurve on this blade. Now before I start grinding the bevels, I did just um, use a, a hand file, a round file, uh, just to add a, a coil hole. And this is really the starting point of the bevel. Now in order to grind the bevels, I use a tilt table bevel grinding jig. Now this is a jig or, or a work platform that Jason Northgard and I uh, designed manufacturer and, and we sell. If anybody's ever interested, you could take a look at that um, on my website, www.bergknifemaking.com. What's nice about this, and what I really like about this particular setup, is that it holds the knife at the bevel angle that you want. <clears throat> but then it allows you to have complete freedom as far as, you know, spending more time in one area, applying more pressure in one area, it really is probably the closest uh, thing to freehand grinding while still using, you know, a, a, a workstation or a, a bevel grinding jig. So with this particular setup, you get the angle set and you start the knife lower uh, than the belt and then you move the blade up into contact with the belt. And once it's in contact with the belt, then you pull it along side to side. You really don't want to force the knife up into the belt. You really want to let the belt do the work. You can use a coarse grit belt uh, for doing the rough bevels. I usually use a, a, about a 60 grit. If the knife's really big, I might go to a 36, but usually a 60. And here you have a better view of, of what you're looking at while you're grinding these bevels. You're holding the blade flat against that tilt table, <clears throat> and you're just watching those center lines, those scribed center lines. And you're going to grind very, very carefully. Just show you a minute. Just until you start to touch that railroad track on each side. You want to make sure that the entire line, the entire bevel, is even with those railroad track lines. Now this is only the rough bevels. This is the preheat treating bevels, but it's still a good opportunity to practice, uh, you know, pulling the blade through, getting a nice clean bevel from one side uh, to the other. The better you make the bevels here, uh, actually the easier it's gonna be to clean them up after heat treating. Now some guys will actually use the tilt table just to set the primary bevel. And then once they have that set, uh, they'll just remove that from the belt grinder and do the rest of the grinding freehand. Now I'm using a uh, Origin Blade Maker 2x72. It's powered by a two horsepower motor, uh, variable speed, a, a great grinder. Once the bevel's done on one side, I'm, I'm basically just going to repeat the process on the other.
And I'm not arbitrarily stopping. I'm, I'm stopping because the blade gets hot. <laughs> so when it, when it starts hurting my thumb, then I'll, then I'll cool it off. It, it doesn't matter. I said this before. If, you, if you're a little bit thicker in one spot, you can spend more time, you know, up towards the tip if you have to. Usually, as long as you make the final pass, as long as the final pass is a fluid pass, uh, then you're going to end up with a nice bevel. Just using a light to check that that the grind is even along those those etched, or the, I'm sorry, those scribed lines. I'm spending a little bit more time on the bevels on this video because. They really are that important as far as what the finished product is going to look like and how the finished product is going to function. So tricks of the trade. This is a, a fairly new segment that I added to these videos. So for this particular build, especially since I'm using coarse grit belt for the bevels, um, if I'm going to set this knife aside for any amount of time, I really want to protect it uh, from rusting and corrosion. And one simple way of doing that is just to spray the blade with WD-40. This works for high carbon steel as well as, uh, as some of the stainless steels. And it's just a great way to prevent any rust or any corrosion from building up you know, on the blades that you're working on. So when I saw how nice the bevels were coming out and I took a better look at the blade, I, I changed my mind and I decided that, that I'm going to add uh, stainless steel bolsters to this knife. So I went back and I drilled two additional uh, 1 8 holes for the bolsters. And then before we go into heat treating, I'm going to use my touch mark stamp. And I just hammer this in. I use a sledgehammer. For this particular one, I hit it kind of hard because this blade is going to get etched. And I want that touch mark stamp or that logo. Uh, to stand up not only to the heat treating and the post heat treating cleanup but also the etching process. So this is stainless. This is AEBL stainless steel and because it's stainless it's going to get a heat treated in a heat treating oven and it's going to get wrapped in stainless steel tool wrap. You make a as airtight uh, of an envelope as possible. Usually you double fold every seam and, and really crease those seams you know with a heavy object like a hammer. Uh, then they're going to go into a heat treating oven. I do batches at a time. So, you know, I like to do, you know, somewhere between four to six knives at a time. And they go into the oven um, at, they go up to 1960 uh, for at least 15 minute hold time. And after that, I take them out. You can see the outline of that knife right through the stainless steel tool wrap. And then it goes into... Um, two plates that I have rigged on a vise, uh, plate quenching basically. So the plates will hold that, those knives nice and straight, it will really prevent any warping, and I'm going to blow compressed air through the gap to cool that down as quickly as possible. It really doesn't take a lot of time, you know, three, four minutes um, will cool that sufficiently. Then you can cut it out of the tool wrap, and depending on how airtight of an envelope you had made. Uh, you will end up hopefully with very little slag on the blade. Now these knives will then go into a sub-zero quench dry ice in a little cooler. After that they'll go to tempering two cycles at uh, 380 degrees for two hours in an oven um, and letting them cool uh, in the oven just turning the oven off for, you know for a few hours. But once the tempering cycle is done you can either go into the post heat treat cleanup, or in this case, I'm going to do a full blade uh, etching on this. I'm going to use, this is stainless, so I'm using vinegar and salt water as the electrolyte solution, and I'm just going to use a piece of gauze. This is an extra piece of gauze that I'm going to lay on the blade. What I'm doing this for is I want to use the texture of the gauze is kind of the texture that I want on the blade. So my, my etching plate, so I've got the, the positive lead of, two, of a 12 volt car battery charger hooked up to the, to the knife. I've got the negative um, hooked up to my etching plate, which is wrapped in gauze and soaked in the electrolyte solution. 
Uh, it's 12 volts, 2 amps. I etch for a total of about 4 minutes uh, in 30 second incre increments. And I do a little bit of cooling in, in between. Uh, you don't have to cool a lot. I'm not using a, a vinyl uh, resist here. I'm just using the texture from the gauze. Uh, then I'm going to use about a 400 grit paper just to clean that up a little bit. And you can tell that I didn't mask off any of the bevels. Um, those will all get cut again and cleaned up. So the next step is to go back to the tilt table. And this is one of the things that I, that I absolutely love about the tilt table. Um, I never change the angle. You know, I, I ground this blade, then I heat treated it, and all I do is put the tilt table back into, um, you know, back, mount it back onto the belt sander or the belt grinder. And one or two passes, I can usually clean up that entire bevel. In this case, that uh, etch was kind of deep, and I could still see a couple of marks from the etching. So I'm going to make another pass. This is it with an 80 grit belt, and then I'll follow that up with a 120. There's still one little spot that I can see of the etching that had gone a little bit deeper than, than what I've cleaned up so far. But this is going to give you a nice, uh, clean, crisp line uh, between the bevel and the etched blade. So this is a total of, of three passes and that bevel is completely cleaned up post heat treating. I'm going to repeat on the other side. So I'm going to move the belt so it overhangs the left side of the flat platen a little bit. I spoke about this on another video. Uh, that's how you kind of get that curved bevel line, plunge line, curved plunge line. And that's basically as far as I'm going to take this, this particular video. Uh, these builds are just, I find that they're a little bit too long to do on one video. Uh, so on the, on the next, on part two of this little mini-series, uh, we're going to make the stainless steel bolsters and add the scales, as well as sharpen the blade. Take a quick look at the knife to this point. Nice crinkled etched blade with a very nice curved plunge line bevel. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd also like to invite you to our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making, and also uh, ask you to check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out last year called Introduction to Knife Making. And that can be found on my website, birdknifemaking.com or amazon.com. Thank you very much.